All right, we're going to look at another uh, curb sketching uh, example here. Uh, here we have uh, x to the fifth over the square root of x to the fourth minus one. Uh, we'll make note that uh, any any real number between negative one and one, including negative one and one, is going to be uh, undefined because we're going to get a negative number in the square root. Um, this uh, function does not have any x or y intercepts because uh, part partly related to this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, find intervals increasing, decreasing behavior, um, any points of inflection, concavity, that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's get going on this. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, derivative. So we're going to use the quotient rule. So it's the load front function, and we'll write it a little bit more user-friendly with the uh, um, one-half exponent, d high minus the high function times the derivative of the bottom, which will be one-half x to the fourth minus one to the negative one-half. And then by the chain rule, we're going to have uh, a 5x to the fourth. I'm sorry, a uh, 4x cubed, sorry, uh, for the chain rule, 4x cubed. Uh, and then all over the uh, denominator squared, which will be x minus 4 to the fourth, x minus uh, 4 to, x to the fourth minus 1. Uh, first power. Um, what we can do here is it looks like um, the greatest common factor. Let's get ahead and for the x's, it's going to be x to the fourth because we're going to have an x cubed and an x to the fifth over here. So we can certainly take out an x to the fourth. Um, but then we're going to take out an x squared uh, to the x to the fourth minus one to the negative one half. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And what's left over is 5. We took out the uh, x to the fourth here, and then this will be to the first power. And then minus the 1 half will make that a 2. And uh, we took out, so we had x cubed and x to the fifth. So we had a total of x to the eighth there, but we factor out an x to the fourth. So we're down to uh, x to the fourth there. Okay all over the denominator squared, which is just x to the fourth minus one. Okay, so we have x to the fourth, and then I went ahead and sent down the x to the fourth minus one to the negative one half. We're going to send that downstairs. Uh, upstairs will simplify a little bit, and we get three x to the fourth uh, minus five. And on the bottom will be x to the fourth minus one to the three halves power. And when we're looking for critical numbers, we're looking for where the derivative does not exist, meaning we're kind of looking for where would we divide by zero, which would be plus and minus one here, but uh, they're not part of the domain, so we don't consider them. Um, x to the fourth would be equal to zero at zero, but that's not in the domain either, so we don't look at that. So we just look at 3x, 3x to the fourth minus five, we'll set that part equal to zero to find our critical numbers. So we'll add 5, add 5, divide by 3, and then take the fourth root of it, and we'll get plus and minus for that, okay? And those would be the real solutions there. So that's going to give us about plus and minus uh, 1.14, okay? So those are the critical numbers that we're going to look at, and we're going to test around them in the first derivative, and that's going to tell us intervals of increasing, decreasing, uh, behavior, and then uh, we can use the uh, first derivative test to see if we have any uh, extrema around, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and write that first derivative again. And what I did is I fa uh, foiled back that x to the fourth end. Um, might make it easier to do the computation. Okay. All right. So we're going to put in the things that are, are of interest to us. So anything between negative 1 and 1, we're not going to use that. So we're going to throw that out. So I got three places to test. In between uh, negative, about negative 0.14, negative 1.14 and negative 1. So we'll try negative uh, 1.05. 
and uh, I got it about negative 16 something. So that says we're decreasing between those two points and then f of 1.0, f prime of, of uh, this is going to be a negative as well. Uh, so that's going to tell us decrease in those locations. Uh, f prime of negative 10 is positive and f prime of 10 is going to be positive so that says it's going to be uh, increasing on the exteriors if you look we went from increasing to decreasing so that's going to be a location of a max and then on the other side we went from decreasing to increasing so that's going to be a location of a minimum to find the y coordinates I need to stick the uh, the critical numbers into the original function to find um, the y coordinate. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm plugging in those critical numbers into the original function. That's going to give me the location. Uh, this looks like it's probably going to be an odd function based off of you have uh, x y is on the graph, so is negative x and negative y is on the graph as well. Okay, so we got some minimums, we found some increasing, decreasing behavior, uh, and then we get to go look at the uh, uh, concavity, but we might go ahead and mention about um, whether this is an odd function or not. An odd function has the property that if I plug in uh, negative x, it's going to be um, the basically the function but if I multiply it by a negative one which that's what it looks like here so that's going to be an odd function and an odd function is symmetric with the origin so we should we should be able to see that but off to the uh, the second derivative okay so first thing we'll do is we'll write the first derivative and uh, the, it just gets so much more fun now because we get to use the quotient rule again and the, the top's more complicated and you know it's it's a mess that's all we can say it's just, this is just a mess alright so second derivative so we're going to go low d high minus high d low so low is x to the fourth minus one to the three halves d high is 24 x to the seventh minus 20 x cubed and then minus um, the high function 3x to the 8th minus 5x to the 4th d low which will be 3 halves x to the 4th minus 1 to the 1 half and then by the chain rule 4x cubed all over the low squared which will be x to the 4th minus 1 to the 3rd power then we're going we're gonna to have all kinds of fun here so I see this is all divisible by 2 this half here will knock out a half, a half of the 4 there to make that a 2, which means I have 2 left over, so I could factor out a 2. Then I'm going to look at um, what's the greatest common factor of x's I have. Um, and I think that's going to be x cubed. So I got, I got x cubed in there, uh, I got an x cubed there. So it looks like I can pull out an x cubed. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So pull out an x cubed and then of x to the fourth minus one to the one half power so leftovers are x to the fourth minus one and then we factor out a two so and an x cubed so that'll be twelve uh, x to the fourth and uh, minus ten minus and we still got this three left over Three and then three x to the eighth minus five x to the fourth, and then all over uh, that denominator. Okay. All right. So I think we have a little bit more real estate to keep going. Uh, let's fix our syntax error. Should end our bracket over here. So we have two x cubed x. And what I went ahead and did is I took this and and uh, subtracted that one half from there. So this is going to end up being a uh, uh, five over two in in a minute here. Um, so let's see. Let's go ahead and start foiling. So 
we're foiling these two together. So 12x to the 8th minus 10x to the 4th minus 12x to the 4th plus 10 minus 9x to the 8th plus uh, 15x to the 4th. And then that common denominator is going to be uh, 6 over 2 minus 1 half, which will be 5 over 2 as the exponent there. Okay? So, uh, it's going to be a little bit of cleanup time. Uh, it, it's, it's just a mess. Um, so, we're going to combine our like terms and then see what we got going on there. So, we got uh, 2x cubed and uh, 3x to the 8th uh, minus 7x to the 4th uh, plus 10. And then all over the uh, x to the fourth minus one to the minus uh, to the five halves. Okay. Now um, notice that you have x to the eighth and then x to the fourth. So there's a, a relationship. One's double. One of the exponents is double the other one. That's in what's called quadratic form. And so I could use the quadratic formula on this. Um, so first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just check the discriminant, which is the b squared minus four ac. Okay. And if that discriminant is negative, that means I have only complex roots. And since we're uh, graphing on the real xy plane, we're going to keep it real and we're not going to do anything with complex numbers. Okay? So no complex roots there. Okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for where the second derivative is equal to zero. Well, that would be where x equals zero, but x is not in the domain, or this whole big mess, where is that equal to zero, and we've we checked, and it only has complex roots. Okay, so um, now we're going to check uh, in the uh, second derivative here. Um, there was no, no uh, numbers to really check around, um, so we're just going to plug in on uh, either side of minus 1 and 1. So f prime of negative 10 is 0, or is less than 0, and then f double prime of 10 is greater than 0. So what we have is concave down to the left and uh, concave up to the right of, of this, this function here. So we're going to put that all together. So um, we're going to put our mins, our maxes, we know about our concavity, and we know about intervals of increasing, decreasing uh, behavior. And this, this thing was just a mess here. All right, so let's put those points in. So there's the uh, negative 1.14 and uh, negative 2.3. And then uh, its companion was 1 and 1.14 and 2.3. We have vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and 1. And we know that we are increasing increasing and then decreasing and we said concave down so that looks good okay and then on the other part I think we said we were decreasing and then increasing and concave up so let's see what we, that's what we have there we go uh, if we want it to be a little bit more accurate use more points